You are indeed our safe refuge. You are the most holy one. Father, we enthrone you, O oh God. We bless your holy name this week. We worship you today, O oh God. We offer you the very best, O oh God. Father, Lord, we honor you, O oh God. We have not gathered unto men, men, O oh God. We have gathered unto the King of Kings, unto the Lord of Lords, unto the Ancient of Days, unto the Mighty God. Oh, we bless you, O oh God. We worship you, O oh God. Oh, we magnify your name. We bless you, O oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Good afternoon, church. As we remain in this attitude of worship, I'm going to take us in the prayer for the nations. I'm going to be reading from Daniel 11, verse 32. And I'm just going to be reading the second part of it. It says, But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. The second scripture I'm going to be reading is from Philippians 3, verse 10. And I'm going to be reading in the Amplified Version. It says, and this, so that I may know him, experientially become more thoroughly acquainted with him, understanding the remarkable wonders of his person more completely, and in that same way experience the power of his resurrection, which overflows and is active in believers, and that I may share the fellowship of his suffering by being continually conformed inwardly into his likeness, even to his death, dying as he did. When um, I was told I was going to do um, take prayer for nations, you know, I asked God that what would you want us to pray about? We've been praying about this, you know. And Daniel eleven thirty two was what God laid on my heart, and I think it came from when Pastor Shalalo Kerry came, and you know, he took us in a time of prayer. And as I kept meditating on it, the Spirit led me to Philippians 3.10. And the more I just meditated on it, you know, I was led to um, excerpts from this book called Days of Heaven Upon Earth by Reverend A. B. Simpson. And I'm just going to read a bit from it and just want us to ponder on it before we pray. We have taught so much about what we have received let us think of the things we have not received of some of the vessels that have not yet been filled of some of the places in our life that the holy ghost has not yet possessed for god and signalized by his glory and his presence shall the coming months be marked by a diligent heart searching shall the coming months be searched by a diligent heart searching application of the rest of the oil to the yet unoccupied possibilities of our lives and services. I just want to ask us a few questions and we're going to pray. Have we known his fullness of grace in our spiritual life? Have we tasted a little of his glory? Have we believed his promise for the mind, the soul and the spirit? Have we known all his possibilities for the body? Have we tested him in his power to control the events of providence and to, and to move the hearts of men and nations? Has he opened to us the treasures, the treasure house of God and met our financial needs as he might? Have we even begun to understand the ministry of prayer as God will have us exercise it? The prayer I want us to pray this morning for ourselves because we are this nation revival is going to start or has started in the church and it's going to flow from us the prayer I want us to pray this morning is for the rest of the oil you know the area 
that God hasn't really manifested or you have not allowed the spirits to fully manifest. And I want us to lift up our voices this afternoon and begin to cry out to God for the rest of the oil. We want more of you, oh God. For someone, it might be boldness. For someone, it might be courage. For someone, it might be love. For someone, it might be to see the power of prayer manifested in their families through salvation. Let us just lift up our voices and just begin to cry out to God this afternoon. And just begin to ask for more of this oil. More of this anointing that he has poured out into the church. More of this anointing. More of this power. More of this works that he has given to us to do. Let us just lift up our voices and just begin to cry out. Because it is only what we ask that we will receive. Father, Mahiba broko son torobo shaki akaso torobo shaki ekete. Mare kariba shaki akaso torobo shaki ekete ere boko. Shaki akaso torobo shaki ekete. Father, we thank you, O oh God. We honor you, Lord Jesus. Father, we come before you today to say we are willing, O oh God. We are ready, O oh God. You can find us worthy to be used by you, O oh God. Father, we cry out for the rest of the oil, O oh God. We cry out, Father Lord, for more of you, O God. We cry out, Father Lord, for a deeper revelation of your power, O God. We cry out for a deeper revelation of you, O God. That we may know you, O God. That we may know you, O God. That we may understand, Father Lord, the fellowship, O God, of your suffering, O God. That we may know the power of your resurrection, O God. That we may be continually conformed and transformed, Father Lord, by you, O God. Father, we bless you, O God. We say thank you for answered prayers. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Can we please be seated as we listen to seven news? Hello and welcome to this week's seven news. Jesus House Healthcare team is fundraising for their next mission trip to Kenya. On the 26th of November in the back foyer, there will be cakes available for sale. There will also be Kenyan themed finger food available for sale. But if you don't want to buy something to eat, why don't you take a picture? There's going to be a photo shoot and for a small donation, you can get a print off of your picture. And if you don't want to do any of those, then you can just put some money into the donation buckets or you can give on the Just Giving page on the iPads that will be available on the day. Please do support them. They're doing a great work and they really do need to raise funds. Sozo is the singles ministry here at Jesus House and in November they're having a five-day prayer session. It's one not to be missed. It starts on the 27th of November which is a Monday and runs right through to the 1st of December which is the Friday. Every night from Monday to Thursday the meeting will take place at Jesus House in the chapel from 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. On Friday however the meeting will continue till midnight so it will start at 9 p.m. and end at midnight. The theme of the prayer session is fight for your day and we know that we do not fight against flesh and blood. We really need to start fighting in the spirit. So why don't you come? Please register on Eventbrite and join Pastor Baju Akisoya as he leads us through this amazing time of prayer. While a lot of people look forward to Christmas, there's a whole lot of people that don't and children of prisoners fall into that category. Angel Tree Network give prisoners the opportunity to send presents to their children. This year, the Jesus House Prison Ministry team with the CSR team here at Jesus House in conjunction with Prison Fellowship UK will be giving 500 children presents. Now what we would like from you is your time to wrap these presents so that the children can receive these presents and really feel the love from their parents. Christmas is just around the corner and 
as you know, here at Jesus House, Christmas is our busiest time. Our theme this year is love and beyond, and we've got loads of things that you can sink your teeth into. So here is what you have to look forward to. 1st of December is the Esther's Christmas party for ladies only. The 6th of December is the last meeting of Connect Groups for this semester. The 8th of December is the Christmas Lunch on Jesus fundraising dinner, which costs £50. The 10th of December is the kids' first Christmas party. The 13th of December is carol service. 16th of December is the Sozo Christmas dinner and dance, that's for singles. 18th to the 22nd of December is spreading Christmas cheer when we go into the tube stations and spread some Christmas cheer by bringing hot drinks and a snack to commuters on their way to work. The 22nd and the 23rd of December is Christmas lunch on Jesus when we will be packing the hampers and delivering them. The 25th of December is Christmas Day service and the 31st of December is New Year's Eve service. Please look out for more information on all the events that are taking place over Christmas. If you want any specific details, please send an email to communications at jesushouse.org.uk. Please note that our monthly prayer meeting takes place on the 24th of November from 8pm. That's it for this week's 7 News. Here's a recap of all the announcements. If you need any further information on anything that you've heard here, please visit the Jesus House website where you can re-watch 7 News again. And also there's a lot more information on the website which you might find useful. Don't forget that Jesus House is social. Please follow us on all your social media platforms. Our handle is at Jesus House UK. God bless you. Have a fantastic week. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Go on, give God a clap, offering. Go on. He deserves it. Amen. 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 Ifechuku, come and, come and share that testimony. Come. Make him welcome, Pastor Ifechuku. Morning, church. Um, I woke up this morning with a severe backache. Um, not man flu type backache, quite a severe backache. And I, I struggled to get out of bed. Um, I'm used to getting to church before nine o'clock. And I actually contemplated not coming to church. And I actually thought, if I'm honest, I thought first my boss would shoot me. <laughs> but um, I, I, actually, I actually really struggled. And then I, I thought, okay, let me just try. It was taking me longer to do everything. And then uh, my wife, God bless her, decided that she, she needed to try and massage my back and work on my back. And as painful as it was, it, it helped a bit, but I was in a lot of pain. And I decided, you know what, I'll, I'll come to church. And I felt the Holy Spirit tell me, just come, worship God, praise God. I had no idea what the service was going to be like today. But I thought, okay, I'll come. And, and after, anyway, you, you preach faith to people. You tell people, you know, trust God. So I thought, okay, I'll pray, God, just heal my back, make it better. I was in so much pain that I, I took some strong painkillers, well, the strongest painkillers we had in the house, uh, some strong ibuprofen. And I really never liked taking medication. Um, so I took that, I drove down, I got in the car, I actually was screaming, um, I'm allowed to admit that, right? I was screaming in the car as I was driving down because I was in a lot of pain. Um, I messaged Pastor Chizo and Pastor Agu to let them know that I, I would be a bit late. And as we were worshiping um, in the first service and then praying, I just felt as I was worshiping, you know, things were getting a bit better, but I was still in a little bit of discomfort. But we did something in the first service um, that I pray we do in the second service, and we were, we were praying for the nation. And, and um, as we prayed, it was an instant relief. Just God just touched me, and all the pain went. I mean, all the pain went. I couldn't do. I couldn't do so. I'm sure some people were wondering why I was worshiping in a certain way. I was trying to check certain at certain points but I actually couldn't touch my toes without excruciating pain so I couldn't literally do this and you know you hear of these things but you know I just believe that we serve a God that answers prayer and sometimes you you forget okay well he, he answers every prayer 
So I thought, okay, God, do what you want. And he, through the praise and what we were doing, I got healed, totally healed this morning. So praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Go on, give God the glory. Go on. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. How, how many people have uh, found themselves sometimes at a place where they are overwhelmed? Yeah, let's see the hands. Yeah? Okay. How, how many people have felt sometimes like the, the enemy has put a, painted a bull's eye on their back? How many have felt like that? Yeah? Uh, that's interesting. So, so how many have ever been at a place where it's almost like you turn to your left, there's an attack. You turn to your right, there's an attack. Ahead of you, there's an attack. Behind you, there, how many have been at that kind of place? Wow. Praise God. You know, there's the story of a young king of Judah called Jehoshaphat. Um, and he found himself in the kind of place that I have described. That one day, he woke up and news was brought to him that a great multitude was coming against him. Three nations had teamed up together, Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, and formed a confederacy to come against this young king and his nation. He knew he had no chance. Uh, it was a no-brainer. There were three strong nations, and there was just him. And as, as would be expected, he got afraid. But then thankfully, he didn't allow his fear to paralyze him. He realized that the only person who could help him was God. And so he sought the Lord's face for God to intervene in his circumstances because he knew he had no chance without that intervention. He proclaimed a fast throughout the whole nation. He gathered the entire nation together and then they started to fast and pray. And he prayed a prayer that the Bible rec records. When you read that prayer in Second Chronicles, or 2 Chronicles, the 20th chapter, he really prays through five things. The first thing he does is he declares who God is by scripture, and by precedence. And then he brings his circumstances to God, the situation that he's faced with. This is what I am faced with. These armies have come against me. And then he asks God to intervene and to judge. And then he declares his dependence on God, his exact words, we have no power against this multitude and we don't know what to do. And then lastly, he makes it clear to God that we are looking to you. His exact words, our eyes are on you. And then he does something very symbolic. He gets the whole nation. The Bible says they are little ones, they are wives, they are children, and they stand before the Lord. The combination of the sincerity of his prayer and the symbolism of his helplessness, which he makes very clear to God, and the fact that he makes clear to God that we have no solution, our eyes are on you, touches as would be expected the heart of God. The result is that the Spirit of God comes upon a Levite who starts to prophesy and his prophecies along these lines. Thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude for the battle is not yours but God's. 
And I want to prophesy to someone under the sound of my voice that the Lord is saying to you, don't be afraid or dismayed by what you face on either side, what, your face, what you face ahead of you, by the circumstances in which you find yourself, for that battle is not yours, but it is the Lord's. And then he goes on in his prophecy to say to this king and the nation, you will not need to fight in this battle. Position yourself, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you. And then he re-emphasizes, do not fear or be dismayed, for the Lord is with you. And the response of the king is instantaneous. Because he receives that prophecy into his heart. It changes the circumstances. It's no longer his battle. It's now God's battle. The fear leaves him. And instantly an awesome reverence of God takes over. And he falls, bows down in worship before the Lord. And they start to sing praises to the Lord with voices loud and hard and high. And then he stands in the new boldness that has come upon him, this king. He stands before the nation and he declares to them in verse 20 of 2 Chronicles 20, Believe in the Lord your God, you shall be established. Believe his prophets, you shall prosper. And then obviously by the leading of God, he institutes a military strategy that to the natural mind would be foolishness. But then it is God who uses the foolish things to confound the wisdom of the wise. His battle strategy is simple. He appoints singers, those who will praise the Lord and the beauty of his holiness. And he places them in front of the army as the army is marching into battle. They are to lift their voices and begin to praise God. Praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. Now as they begin to praise God, an amazing thing starts to happen. The Lord is attracted by their praise. The Bible makes clear that the Lord that we serve inhabits the praises of his children. We don't praise God for what he will do, but there are consequences of us praising God. We praise God out of reverence, out of love. We praise God because of who he is. But then one of the byproducts of praising God is that it attracts God and he inhabits the throne that our praises build. The result of that is that he's introduced into circumstances, into situations. The result of that is that he comes in against those that stand against his children, against his church, against his kingdom. And as they begin to praise God, God goes into action. The Bible says he sets ambushes against the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir who had come against Judah. And what nature of ambushes does he set? He sows confusion into their council. He sows confusion into their camp. He destroys the confederacy. He scatters the conspiracy. The people of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir to utterly kill and destroy them. Isn't it amazing that three armies come against Jehoshaphat and against Judah, they are in agreement that they have one goal, the destruction of, Ju of Judah. But as they come together and Jehoshaphat institutes this weapon of warfare that praise can be, suddenly confusion is sown into their council. And then the nation of a Ammon and the nation of Moab decide that Mount Seir is their enemy. And so they join forces to destroy Mount Seir. That would have been an amazing miracle. But then when they destroy Mount Seir, 
they suddenly look at each other and hate each other. And Ammon decides Moab is his enemy, and Moab decides Ammon is his enemy. And so they go against each other and destroy each other. My prayer for you is that as you start to praise God, if there's anything that the enemy has planned against you, if there's any conspiracy against you, if there's any confederacy against you, if there's any gathering against you, if there's any gathering against this nation, if there's any enemy that wants to, enemy from the pits of hell that wants to stop this nation from bowing its knee to God, that I, as we begin to praise God, God will sow confusion into the camp of the enemy. The result is that when they finish destroying each other, the spoils of battles, of the battle, was there for Jehoshaphat to take. What did Jehoshaphat do? He just obeyed God. How did he obey God? God said, put the singers in front. Doesn't make any sense. The, the, the soldiers with the battles, with the weapons of battle should be in front. But that was God's strategy. It was God's way of telling us that praising him is a weapon of warfare. My prayer is that as we praise and worship him today, the Lord will inhabit the praise from your lips. That your lips will frame a throne that is so beautiful that it will be irresistible to God. That the jewels of praise that will come from your mouth and bedeck the throne that is going to be formed by the words you shall praise him with will be so attractive that God will come and that when God comes, the hosts of heaven will come with God into your circumstance. That testimony Fetchuku shared was a simple one, but that's exactly what happened. As we, as, we, as we praise God, he was actually slain and he got up a new man. My prayer is that your praise will cause God to come down into your life and you will become a new person. Let's, let's just do what Jehoshaphat did. Let's worship this God who is high and lifted up. We praise the Lord, the King of kings. You're worthy of praise. You're worthy of worship. Our confidence is in the fact that the battle belongs to the Lord. In heavenly armor we enter the land. The battle belongs No weapon that's fashioned against us will stand the battle. So we sing, we
God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Glory.
afternoon church let us just take this moment to reflect for a moment for a couple minutes who is our God let us reflect on him who has he been to us these past few days this past year who has he been these past 10 years yes since he brought us into a relationship with him throughout our whole lives before we even ever knew him who is our God who is the God of the Bible who is the God of Abraham Isaac and Jacob Moses said of him, he is a consuming fire. King David said, he is a just judge. King Solomon said, he is to be feared. Yes, Jesus Christ, while he was here on earth, said, he is perfect. God says of himself, I am who I am. Is he not who he is? For he is the creator of the heavens and the earth. Yes, the very air we breathe, he created it. You and I, this building we worship him in, he created it. Redeeming us, he redeemed us by the blood of his son. Then he delivered us from this body of death by giving us of his spirit that he will dwell in us. Oh, is he not a great God? Is he not a majestic God? Walking with us every step of the way. We even when foolishly, we do not remember that he is next to us. He is forever there for his word says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Is this not a great God? Oh, he is majesty. Jesus' house, who do you, what, how do you testify of your God? Is he not a father to the fatherless? Is he not the comforter to the brokenhearted? Is he not a mighty deliverer? Is he not a God who fights our battles so that we don't have to fight them ourselves? For he says, vengeance is mine, I will repay. Is he not a God who heals the sick? Is he not a God who has healed us all? Sure, many of us will testify that by miraculous works did he heal us. Is he not a God who is forever by our side? The very seed we sow, he provided it. Yes, increase, he gave it. For if we were to labor by our own strength, we would labor in vain, but by his strength, he continues to do everything according to his great pleasure. Oh, Father, you are mighty. Is he not a God who continues to ordain our footsteps? Yes, when we thought we lost it all, he showed us that he had something better. Is he not a God when they said no, he said yes. Is he not a God when they said it's impossible, he said with me all things are possible. 
Is he not a God who directed our footsteps that two would become one? Is he not a God who then provided us with godly offspring? Jesus house, do you not testify to this God? Is he not a God who, as we continue to wait patiently for his promise, will surely bring it to pass? Do we not believe in that God? Is he not a God who caused Sarah to bear Isaac even when she was past the age? For he is not man that he should lie, no. Not the son of man that he should change his mind. This is our everlasting God, our King of kings. Jesus said, even the sparrows, nothing happens to them without he deciding it. Then how much of more value are we to him than sparrows? Oh, Father, who is our God? Who is our God? gives his angels charge over us that whether we sleep or are awake we are protected yes whether we go out or come in we are protected no matter where we go we are protected that we will not be ensnared by the traps of the evil one no but we have victory is this not a God that is a mighty God an everlasting God if all these things oh God you are mighty if all these things weren't enough just to top it off gave us the promise of everlasting life that we too will join the angels in heaven singing holy 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 is our lord god almighty let us give god a praise for he is an ever faithful god an all-powerful god an all-loving god an everlasting god worthy is his name worthy is his name we bless you father we bless you my king blessed be your name hallelujah
Yes, you 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship you, our Father and our God. We worship your holy name. We give you all the praise. You are worthy to be praised. The Alpha and Omega, we worship you. Who is this God? Now, those who don't know him might think he is a character in a book, a fiction of imagination, an image or an idea. Who is this God? When I sit back to think about who God is, I'm flooded with so many things in my mind. But the thing is, when you start to think about it, you realize that he is far too big to understand, to comprehend. He is too complex. This God that we serve, great and mighty, he is the great I am. You see, one of the things that I realized is that when we think about who God is, he reveals himself to us. He reveals the best parts of himself to us. The King of kings, the Lord of lords, the great I am, the creator of the heavens and the earth. This God who is eternal, this God who is infinite, without a beginning, without an end, and is everything in between. This God that we serve is great and mighty, all-powerful, all-seeing, all-knowing, always present. Our Father and our God, and the main thing that we know is that He loves us. He has created each and every one of us. He pours out His love into us as His sons and daughters, everyone with a plan and a purpose. This God takes the time to spend with each and every one of us. At the same time, he controls the whole universe. My God, who is this God that we serve? Hallelujah. Look, if you think about things that have happened in the past, Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, with all his horses and chariots, his horsemen, his army, he went after the people of Israel, and they fled with, with fear. But the thing is, in the midst of all that fear and doubt, the word was clear. Fear not. Stand firm. See the salvation of the Lord, which will work for you today. Hallelujah. Oh, this God that we serve. This God that we serve. What an amazing God that we serve. Oh, Father God, we praise you. We worship you. We worship your holy name. This God who parted the sea and they walked across to safety. Doesn't matter what's going on in front, behind, beside, to the left, to the right. This God is always there to fight our battles, to look after us, to protect us. He is always there. He is always there. It does not matter what the situation, the limitations, whatever frustrations, trials and tribulations you may be going through. This God is always there. Who is this God that we serve? My God! Just as He has brought us to this world, He is always the same yesterday, today, and forever. Our Father, our Deliverer, just as He delivered Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego when King Nebuchadnezzar put them into the fiery flame, because they did not pay him any attention, because they refused to fall down, because they refused to worship an image of gold, he delivered them. Three cast into the fire, bound, but four were seen walking around unbound and free. Out of the fire they came, not a mark on their bodies, no smell of smoke. Do you not see that we serve an amazing God? Not a single mark on their bodies. This God is truly amazing. Our Father and our God, our Deliverer. In every situation, it does not matter what you're going through. In times of sickness, in times of trials and tribulations, He is always there. He protects us, He watches over us, He delivers us. Oh, we thank you, oh God, as He pours out His love upon us, that miracle worker in our lives that brings about healing in every situation. It does not matter what kind of sickness that you have. He's healed those who have been paralyzed. He's given the blind sight. He has healed the lepers. This God is amazing. This is our God. We praise you, O oh Father. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The God that we serve, you encounter him every day. And when all things around you fade, when all things 
fade away, he remains the same. Ever present, ever sure. Oh, we thank you, oh God, for you are truly our Father, Yahweh, the one who would never change. Amen. Indescribable, uncontainable, you place the stars in the sky and you know them by name. You were amazing, all powerful, all powerful, untamable. Greatly to be praised. 
Jesus. Uh, too marvelous for words to describe. He's one of all we can give him more. He's bigger than words can describe. He's great and greatly to be praised. Uh, your word. For you reign magnificently, you rule victoriously, and your power shows through all the earth. And we exclaim that our God is mighty. Our God is mighty. We lift up your name. Lift up your name. ancient times behold he speaks forth with his voice a mighty voice what a mighty voice indeed a voice that speaks to your life to your life to your life a voice that speaks to this church a voice that speaks to this nation who is this God the voice of the Most High the voice that was in the beginning and said let there be light and there was light for he spoke and he came to be he commanded and he stood firm who is this God who calls into being things that don't exist? Who is this God? The voice that speaks from above the mercy seat. For the Lord's voice is mighty and is marvelous. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. Who is this God? The Lord thundered from heaven. The voice of the Most High resounded amid the hail and the burning coals. His voice echoes over the oceans. It thunders above the roar of the raging seas. Who is this God? It makes lightning flash and the desert tremble. Who is this God? For when he utters his voice, there is a tumult of waters in the heavens. For when he utters his voice, Lazarus came back from the dead. Who is this God? Who is this God? For he causes the clouds to ascend from the end of the earth. He makes lightning for the rain. He brings out the wind from his storehouses. For who can stand before the voice of the Lord our God, the Lord your God, the Lord our God? For he is the Lord of hosts. Uh, who is this God? The hope of Israel, a mighty warrior, a mighty God, mighty in power, mighty in battle, mighty indeed, mighty to save. Who is this God? 
Jehovah Saba, the Lord, our warrior, who is this God? For the nations made an uproar, the kingdoms turtled. He raised his voice, the earth melts. His voice which spake from Mount Zion and shook the earth. But now he has promised that once again, I will not only shake the earth, but I will shake the heavens also. Who is this God? And his voice was like the sound of many waters, and the earth shone with his glory. Who is this God? The Lord will give unyielding and impenetrable strength to you and I, to his people. For those of us who are called by his name, who is this God? The voice of the Lord declares, my word goes forth from my mouth. It shall not, it cannot return to me void. For it must accomplish what I send it forth to do. It must accomplish what I please. And it shall prosper in each and every single thing I send it forth to do. Who is this God? For who art thou, O great mountain, before the river bell? For you shall become a plain. Who is this God? The Lord your God is in your midst, the mighty one. He will save. He is mighty indeed. Who is this God? One thing I heard the Lord speak, twice have I heard it, that all power belongs to our God. Who is this God? Be still and know that I am God, says the voice of the Lord. The Lord says, I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in England. I will be exalted in Scotland. I will be exalted in Wales. I will be exalted in the North, Northern Ireland. Who is this God? I will be exalted in the earth. For the Lord of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob, who is our refuge. Who is this God? For he is Jehovah Nissi, the Lord our banner. He is Jehovah Magenu, the Lord our defense. He is Jehovah Maka, the Lord that smites. He is Jehovah Shabbat, the Lord the judge. He is Jehovah Erohi, the God who sees. Who is this God? Jehovah Racham, the merciful God. Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals you and I. Who is this God? Who is this God? Who is this God? Let us praise this God. Let us exalt this God, for he is mighty, he is powerful. Lift up the name of Jesus. Lift up the name of Jesus. Who is this God? Lift up the name of Jesus. The awesome God, the powerful God, the beautiful God, the merciful God, the forgiving God, the performing God, the gracious God, the almighty God, the living God, the miraculous God, King immortal, King invisible, King eternal, King of ages, Lord God almighty, Lord of glory, Lord of hosts, Lord of righteousness, Lord of all, Lord of lords, who is this God? Shield, buckler, help, strong tower, provider, protector, who is this God? Defender, who is this God? Glory and the lifter of my head, who is this God? Author and the finisher of my faith, who is this God? Who is this God? The beginning and the end, unquestionable, unquestionable. Has he said anything? Will he not do it? Has he promised it? Will he not bring it to pass? Holy, holy Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come? Who is this God? Mighty warrior, great in battle, Jehovah. Yes, mighty warrior. Mighty warrior. Great in battle. Great in battle. Hey.
Worship him with a clap of free God. Worship him with a clap of free. Oh, we bless you, oh God. Oh, we bless you, oh God. Oh, we bless you, oh God. We worship 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 you, oh God. 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, verses 27 to 29. 1 Corinthians 1, 27 to 29. Can we read together 1 Corinthians 1 27 to 29 can we read together if you can get it on the screen hallelujah father we just want to thank you 1 Corinthians 1 27 to 29 can we read together but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise and God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty and the base things of the world and the things which are despised God has chosen and the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are that no flesh shall to glory in his presence hallelujah a young boy found himself stepping into the shoes of a patriarch. A patriarch who had blazed a trail in the nation. He'd been used by God as a deliverer, the patriarch, to bring the children of Israel out of Egypt. With a mighty hand, God demonstrated his awesome power through the patriarch. And by the time it got to the turn of this young boy, understandably, he had trepidation in his heart, fear. Of course, he wondered if he had the ability to lead this nation. He had seen how hard-hearted this nation could be. But then, as God called him, God brought an assurance, telling him not to be afraid. He would never leave him nor forsake him. He would be with him on this journey. As the young boy led the nation towards God's promises, he encountered his first major 
obstacle. It was easily one of the most significant recorded in the Bible. It was the city of Jericho. He needed to conquer it. But then as the Bible records, Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. One evening as he was taking a walk to contemplate, probably to pray and to hear from God as to how he would overcome this obstacle. The Bible records that he lifted his eyes and looked and behold a man stood opposite him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went to him and said to him, Are you for us or for our adversaries? The man replied, No, but as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and worshipped and said to him, What does my Lord say to his servant? Then the commander of the Lord's army said to Joshua, Take your sandal off your foot, for the place where you stand is holy. And Joshua did so. And the Lord said to Joshua, I have given Jericho into your hand, its king and the mighty men of valor. In much the same way that God is saying to someone at the end of this session of worship, that he has given it into your hand. But then he gave him a strange instruction. You shall march around the city, all your men of war. You shall go around the city once. He uses the foolish things to confound the wise, the base things to confound the mighty. For naturally, the strategy should have involved the soldiers. The soldiers that Joshua had were well trained. They were men of war. But so that the glory is the Lord's and nobody else's, he put the soldiers on hold. The instruction was, march around the city with the men of war. You go around the city once. You do this for six days. And strangely, the instruction went, seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark. On the seventh day, you shall march around the city seven times. And the priests shall blow the trumpets. It shall come to pass when they make a long blast with the ram's horn and when you hear the sound of the trumpet that all the people shall shout with a great shout then the wall of the city will fall down flat and the people shall go up every man straight before him exactly as the Lord said Joshua woke up early in the morning the priests carried the ark of the Lord the seven priests the seven trumpets of ram's horns the armed men went before them. The rear guard came after the ark of the Lord. And the priests continued blowing the trumpets. The second day they marched around the city once, re returned to the camp. And so they did for six days. But it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose early about the dawning of day. I want to declare to someone that it is not coincidental that the Lord has already declared to you that you are in the seventh season. For on the seventh day they arose to march around the city seven times, seven times in somebody's seventh season. And on that day they marched around. And the seventh time it happened, when the priests blew the trumpets, that Joshua said to the people, Shout, for the Lord has given you the city. Now the city shall be doomed by the Lord to destruction, it and all who are in it. I want to declare to you that anything that is standing against God's plans for your life, anything that is holding back God's, God's plan for your life, anything that is trying to pervert God's purpose, anything that's trying to abort God's destiny, anything that's trying to terminate God's purpose in your life, I want to declare to you that as you release this shout, as you just obey, 
as you do what is simply foolish, God will use it to confound the wise and the mighty. And as we do it, I'm believing God that for this nation, in the way that only God can, as we shout, the walls that are stopping the gospel from flooding this nation will come down. The walls that are trapping people in all kinds of immorality will come down. The walls that are holding souls from seeing the glorious light of the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will come down. Somebody says to me, but how can this thing be? I say that's exactly what a young virgin asked when an angel came from heaven with a message that she would bear a child and that the child would be the son of God. How can this thing be, she asked. The angel's instruction to her was simple. By the power from on high, the Holy Ghost will overshadow you. How can this thing be that we have a revival in this nation when they say church attendance is declining and immorality is spreading and aggressive secular humanism is driving church out of the public sphere? How can this thing be? It can be because the Spirit of the Lord will overshadow this nation and bring it to pass. How can that thing be in your life that you've believed God for? How can it be? It can be simply because God says it will be. Father, we just want to thank you and bless you. I'd like to ask you to do something prophetic to end today. I'm going to ask you to just obey those instructions and imagine that what you want coming down is right before you. It's shut up. The enemy is holding something that is destined to be yours. The enemy is preventing something of God from going in. I want you to think about what that one thing is. And at the same time, I want you to also think about this nation. We care about this nation. This nation is the reason why you and I are saved. Missionaries left these shores and took the gospel to the far-flung parts of the world, especially Africa and the Caribbean and Asia. And the seeds they sowed, we are the harvest of those seeds. We wouldn't be saved if some people hadn't lost their lives from the shores of this nation. And it is impossible for the God that I serve to forget the labor of love of this nation. And so I declare that today the gates must open because the Lord strong and mighty wants to come into this nation. I declare that the everlasting doors must give way because the Lord strong and mighty wants to come into this nation. I declare into your life that the gates must give way. Ancient gates must give way. Gates that have held families bound must give way because the Lord strong and mighty wants to come into your life. I declare the Lord strong and mighty comes into our communities, into our villages, our towns and our cities. By this shout, I dare to believe that the things that be not will be and that we will see an outpouring of the Spirit of God in this nation. Father, we thank you. Why don't you rise to your feet? Why don't you rise to your feet? Can I have, can I have a symbol of the map of this nation, please? Can I just, just lay it down here? And can I have a representation of the pastors? Ayo, come. Boland, they really come. Auntie V, please come. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. I need some guys. Ifechuku and Baj, come. Just a representation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just place that map of this nation in the center. Go and Baj, join them. Hallelujah. Now, believe the Lord was the word Jehoshapha brought. You will be established. Believe the prophet or in this case the prophetic word and you will prosper. I declare that you will prosper. This nation will prosper. The villages and towns and cities in this nation will prosper. The instruction was clear. Please join me in a foolish act from which testimonies will surely abound. Walk around the city once every day for six days. On the seventh day, walk around seven times. And when you hear the priests blow the trumpets, 
a long blast of the trump trumpets then shout it's an interesting shout it's a shout of faith it's a shout of victory it's a shout of praise it's a shout that declares that god's purposes and plans have come to pass maybe there's someone who would believe this foolishness if you're that person i look forward to your testimony Wally, when I say blow, on the seventh time, then you, 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 you blow. I know you don't, might not have space where you are, but try and make a circle as I count. So pastors, will you start the circle? This is the first day, the first time. Go on, turn around where you are. This is the second time, the second day. We are entering the third day. Seven is the number of perfection, we're told. You're in your seventh season. We're entering the fourth day. We're entering the fifth day. We march around this nation. We're entering the sixth day. We march around that stronghold in your life is coming down. We are entering the first, the seventh day, and this is the first of the seventh day. The second of the seventh day. The day of perfection. It is impossible for God not to respond. The third of the seventh day. Everything we do is by the leading of the Spirit of God. Oh God of mercy, honor, honor your word. The fourth of the seventh day. Honor your word. The fifth of the seventh day. In your seventh season. The sixth of the seventh day. May the angels hearken to our cry. May the Lord of heaven do what he has purposed. We enter the seventh of the seventh day. Blow the trumpet. Now lift your voice with a shout. Lift your voice with a shout. With a shout. With a shout. Oh, we bless you. Oh, we bless you. Oh God, hurk into the shout. For your name's sake, hurk into the shout. For your name's sake, hurk into the shout. Hear our cry for this nation. Hear our cry for every family that's here. We thank you, oh God. We thank you, oh God. We thank you, oh God. Lift up your heads, O you gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. He shall come in to each life that is under the sound of my voice, to each family that is represented 
by a life under the sound of my voice to each community that is represented here to every village every town every city in this nation he shall come in to the United Kingdom who is this King of glory the Lord strong and mighty the Lord mighty in battle lift up your heads O you gates lift up you everlasting doors and the King of glory shall come in into every life under the sound of my voice every family that is represented under the sound of my voice every community every village every town every city the king of glory shall come back into this nation who is this king of glory the lord of hosts he is the king of glory worship him for a minute or two bless his holy name we thank you O god we worship you O god we worship you O god thank you lord 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 so arise, O oh God, that's our cry to your rest, O oh God. That's our cry, Lord. So arise to your rest and be In this nation, O oh God, by we praise you for every life that is here. We just glory, glory in your hands. Now lift hands, all the glory, all the glory, lift hands, lift hands as we come to an end. There's nothing that is sweeter than his presence. Of your presence. We your temple give you reverence. We From the depths temple. of our beings, we worship you in the heavens. time with one voice so arise so arise so arise yes Lord the King of glory comes in the Lord of hosts is his name the mighty man of war be blessed by our praise oh God do what you purpose do what you purpose do what you purpose do what you purpose Father, we just want to thank you for loving us so we want to thank you 
for loving your church. We want to thank you. For the special place that this nation has in your heart, we say thank you. For the things that you have done, we say thank you. For the abundance of testimonies, we say thank you. For stepping into families and into lives, into communities, villages, towns, and cities. For coming in as the King of Glory to this nation, we say thank you. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name. Go and give God a clap offering. Go on. Go and give him a clap offering. Give him a clap offering. Give him a clap offering. Give him a clap offering, and then you may be seated in God's wonderful presence. Hallelujah. You may be seated in God's wonderful presence. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs>